Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the flight management computer on board the Airbus A320 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So uh, if you remember from last time, uh, we went over what every one of these little systems does, and uh, today we're actually going to kind of focus on one of the most critical components of this aircraft, and that's going to be the FMS. So first things first, uh, we want to get ourselves some electrical power so uh, we can get everything set up. A couple of videos ago, we went ahead and got ourselves a pretty solid flight plan, and we're going to do it the hard way and actually enter it by hand today. So I'm going to pop up to this thing. This is external power. I'm going to go ahead and flip that sucker on. Uh, normally, what you could worry about, too, is uh, do I want to run off the APU right now or do I want off the external power? If I'm going to be sitting here for a while on the ground, just kind of tapping away at that system, I'm probably going to want to run on external power just so that I don't have to stress about this thing suddenly dying on me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of float my head over here and uh, kind of take a look directly at the FMS. So this is an amazing, amazing system. It gives us the ability to predict our performance. And unfortunately, there is a little tiny bit of sun that is absolutely blinding my view here. Da, da, da. See, in the real world, this is the safest method to solve this problem. Simply change the time of day. Ah, much better. So this whole system here basically is the master control program, magical computer program, everything that you could ever need in one little piece. Setting this thing up is not nearly as intimidating as uh, people think it is. Uh, if you want to use the flight simulators directly, like if you built a flight plan and then you opened up the simulator directly, it'll actually be pre-programmed for you. But for those of you who want the extra challenge, which is what we're here to do today, we can actually program it by hand. So let, let's go ahead and do that. First thing you're going to want to do is you want to press the init, which stands for initialize. Uh, when you do this, uh, there's going to be a couple critical pieces of information we're going to need. I am sorry, but that sun is just ever so slightly irritating. Go away, sun. Ah, oh, it's so much better. Okay, so now it, whenever you see any of these little panels here, if you see blue text, that indicates you have the ability to type something in there. Whenever you see orange text, this usually means it is a required value. As a general rule, anything that's not required is in critical, but remember this is a simplified version of this for a flight simulator, at least at this time. So the first thing we're going to want to do is say where we're coming from and where we're going to. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at my little notes here. I'll make sure everything's looking all kind of hunky-dory there. And I'm going to simply type in where we're going from. So we're going from Sierra, Victor, Mike, Charlie. So Sierra, Victor, Mike, Charlie. I'm gonna do a slash and they say Sierra, Victor, Mike, India. This is all I have to do. Now I come up here and press from two. Now you're gonna go, uh oh, I broke flight simulator. What happened? Why is it, why is it being weird? Why is it being weird? What's happening right now is flight simulator is actually going in and trying to determine if there's a company route that exists. There does not. So I'm gonna go ahead and press that button. So as soon as I type that in, you'll probably notice that these two lights suddenly lit up saying, hey, I need a value. You gotta hook me up here. Now, the interesting thing is if we wanted to save this, we could actually say, uh, you know, FLT or something like that, flight one. We could actually come up here and uh, save this route. So now we have it for future routes as well. You can also change your flight number. All right, cost index. What is cost index? Cost index is basically how fast do I want to go versus how much fuel do I want to burn? The lower the cost index, the better fuel savings. But of course, it takes you longer to get there. So a lot of airliners basically say, do I want to pay for fuel or do I want to pay for maintenance and find the magical number here? Um, the highest you can go in an Airbus is a 100. At the lowest, you can go with zero. Most people pick something around 45. But for me, if you remember well, previously, a couple of videos ago, we had actually calculated exactly what we wanted to use as our particular index. So if you remember our little flight plan that we had a little while ago, let's go ahead and see if we've got everything here. We can actually look up what I used for a CI. In this case, I used a CI 100 when I was planning my original flight. So that means we're just going to have to dial that in directly. So I'm going to type in 100, boop, and dial this in. This is going to be a very high-speed flight. Next, we're going to dial in our cruise flight level. Uh, since I'm using Simbrief here, it already has a cruise flight level calculated. It's going to be 230. So I'm going to come in here and say 230. And then it's going to ask us for our temperature. So I'm going to do slash. We're going to go look up our cruise temperature here. Very, very critical. Let's see here. We're going to pick one point right in the middle. No, looks pretty good. Let's see here. We have a minus 15 degrees. Well, that's cold enough. Minus 15. Remember, you're working with Celsius here. I'll go backwards. Let's do a slash. Uh, well, minus 15 degrees. Click right here. And you can see it gives me flight level 230, and it gives me a temperature of 15. Now, you'll notice up here in the top right corner, this little arrow saying, hey, yo, there's uh, more information you got to tell me here. So let's go ahead and press that button. This is where it would bring us to our fuel planning. Now, the fuel planning, at least in flight simulator, is a little limited. Uh, we could actually come in here. We could dial in exactly how much route we'd have. We can just dial in our, our reserve percentage. You can put all that in here. You could even dial in your estimated trip fuel, your estimated taxi fuel. And normally what this would do is actually do a really nice job of calculating everything for us. The important thing here is we have our block fuel, and uh, we know that's going to be fairly accurate. All this stuff at this point, we're not really going to be stressed out or worried about. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my attention and bring it over to our flight plan itself. So I'm going to come down to the plan button, 
And this is going to bring up our flight plan. Now, people who are familiar with the Boeing system, this is a little different beast than the Boeing. I'm, I'm personally a fan of the Boeing way of doing it. It just feels more like you're working with a calculator. This feels a little bit more like you're working with something from uh, 1979, you know, with a big old fat keyboard and floppy disks and stuff like that. But they're both wonderful systems. They work fine. I'm just making, this is just personal preference, personal preference, don't need, don't need to go uppity. So anyway, the way this works is super simple. We're simply going to go ahead and select the waypoint we're starting from. And we're going to select what our departure is. I'm going to press the departure button. What this will do is this will give us all the runways at our disposal. Now, if you remember, if we go back over to SimBrief, it actually calculated this for us. So if I actually scroll up a teeny tiny bit here, uh, let's go pause. Let's see if I can find out. Ah, here we go. Runway three left. So I'm going to come down to runway three left and left click on the button next to it. It's going to ask me for what SID I want. And if you remember, we already picked a SID. We picked a SIBO one. And then what it's going to do is it's going to ask us for our transition. Your transition is usually going to be the next waypoint on here. By the way, if you need to go through a different page, you can press these little arrows here. Our transition in this case is going to be Mike Alpha Uniform. I'm just going to click it like that. So now we're taking off from runway tree left. We're taking the SID SIBA 1, and we're taking the transition MAU. So I'm going to go ahead and press Insert. So now that's gone ahead and changed our initial starting waypoint to represent all of the different components of our particular departure here. And you can see my first waypoint is now MAU, Mike Alpha Uniform. So now what we're going to do is we're going to dial in our airway. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Mao, and you're going to see a button that says Airways down here at the bottom right corner. I'm going to go ahead and select that, and now what you're going to do is select the airway that you want to be coming from. So we're coming on to the Alpha, to, I believe it's Alpha 552, so I'm just going to press A. 552. And now we're going to select where our last waypoint on that is going to be. And it's going to be Papa Bravo Lima. So I'm going to go P B L. Give it a second so it doesn't have a heart attack on us. And that will have programmed it directly into the computer. So pressing return, you'll notice now that I have PBL ready to rock. Now the next waypoint after PBL is ALDAC1. ALDAC1 is the approach procedure in going into that particular place. So to select that, I'm going to come down to the button next to my destination, me. Now I'm going to select Arrival. And now I'm simply going to pick what my arrival is going to be. In this case, my arrival is going to be ILS Runway 10. Now you'll notice that our stars now pop up. It's going to say, okay, what star did you want? Now if you remember, we selected LDAC1. So I'm just going to come to LDAC1. It's going to ask us for what our transition is going to be. In this case, uh, we have PBL, but I don't think PBL is available. So I'm going to leave it at the default, and I'm going to press Temporary Insert. So as soon as I do that, it's going to bring us back here. Everything looks good. ILS-10, Coralie, LDAC-1, transition, approach, looks good. Go return, and now our flight plan has been created. You can see our initial position is going to be the runway. We're going to take the Aceba departure. We're going to go to Mike Alpha Uniform, Papa Bravo Lima, I, Alpha November Delta Alpha Lima. We're going to do the LDAC arrival down to Coralie, which is going to take us all the way down to our runway. These are all going to be radials for doing a big arc in the sky in order to line us up with runway 10. And again, I'm pressing the up arrow to bring us all the way down to runway 10. Woo! How's that for a bit of a process? Now, one of the nice things here is it will estimate the time you will get there. It will also automatically put in any specific altitudes that we're concerned with. Remember, our cruise altitude today is flight level 230. So now that that's been preset, you can actually see it in here. So we're not going to be spending that much time at our cruise altitude. So now that that's been set and our flight plan is looking good, there's no discontinuities in it, everything's looking perfectly solid, we can always now go over to our next stage, which is going to be our perf page, which represents performance. Now, the way performance works in this aircraft is similar to the way that they did it over in the uh, Boeing as well. Basically, you have all the critical information. Notice, by the way, it's very interested in these orange values. These values are all you can select them as far as default values goes. Now, there's really only a couple things we need to worry about here. And again, this is a little different in the real Airbus than it is in the flight simulator. The first one are going to be these three values here. This is our speed where we have to decide whether to take off. This is our speed when we lift the front wheel. And this is going to be our speed where we're going to decide whether or not um, or actually, I'm sorry, this will be the speed that the aircraft lifts off the ground, basically starts that initial climb out. Over on this side, this allows us to do a shift. Let's say we're taking a, a mid-runway takeoff. Uh, of course, we also have the ability to select different flaps. Now, the interesting thing here is I was fencing with this a little bit, and this does not match up with my experience in other Airbuses inside of uh, other simulators as far as uh, payware and stuff like that goes. But basically, you could dial in what flap setting you're using here. We have our flex takeoff temperature. Um, this is a pretty complicated concept. Basically, what a flex temperature is, is it gives us the ability to tell the engine it's actually hot outside, so it'll actually use less power, enabling us to you know save on you know, wear and tear on the engines and stuff like that. Um, whenever you're going to use this, uh, this is actually a 
fairly tricky calculation and I don't have the chart in front of me that I can show you kind of how to like work your way down it. But as a general rule, if you have more than 8,000 feet of runway to take off, you can do a flex takeoff as long as it's not too hot outside, in which case you can just dial a temperature that's hotter than the current outside temperature. Right now it says it's 20 degrees Celsius. I can dial in 45 degrees Celsius and the engines will actually set themselves down in order to represent that it's too hot. I need to run my engine slower. Next, what we're going to do is that we have a thrust reduction altitude. This is our acceleration altitude. This will be the altitude where um, the engine's going to start yelling at us and saying, climb, climb. Um, obviously, if you're working in the middle of the Andes Mountains, this number is going to be a bit bigger. Uh, this number is going to be relatively small because we're pretty close to sea level here. Transition altitude is going to be 5,000 feet. Of course, if we have an engine out acceleration, we can go ahead and go ahead and dial that altitude as well. After we've got all this information done, you'll notice we have a V1, VR, and a V2 up here in the top right corner. Basically, this is going to be, like I said, our critical speeds. To get these speeds, we can either dial them in manually, or you can just click on the little button next to the left of them. And this will tell you what those speeds are, and they will actually automatically load these speeds into the computer for us as well, which is really, really handy. Now, if you wanted to change these, if I were to come over here and change my flap setting, if I clicked on these, I'd actually get a different number from them. Very interesting. I'm going to go to next phase. This is our selected. This is our climb page. This is where you can go ahead and you notice my CI is still there. Uh, obviously, this is on selected climb mode. If I wanted to do managed, I can actually come up here and go boop and push that button in. And now it is a managed climb. And the managed climb right now is going to be obviously 159. Uh, this is uh, going to change, of course, once I get airborne. If we needed to do a specific climb speed, let's say I wanted to do a tree zero zero, like uh, we saw up in our flight plan, I can actually come in here and dial in a pre-selected speed of tree zero zero. And now it's a managed selected climb. <laughs> kind of interesting. All right, we'll go ahead and pop over to the next phase. This is our cruise. Obviously, this is a whatever our cruise situation is going to be. That's our managed speed. Obviously, we're going to try to go as fast as we can, probably Mach 0.78 or so once we do go up there. Notice it also estimates your fuel and everything along those lines. You can even come in here and change in your descent cabin rate if you're in an emergency and everything like that. Next phase, of course, is going to be our descent page. You can go ahead and dial in your descended speed. Keep in mind, you got to be kind of cautious with this here because um, you don't want to descend faster than you're actually supposed to once you get under 10,000 feet. So generally, I leave this alone. If you do want to select it, a lot of people come in here and dial in like 251 or something like that just to kind of cheese things. But we'll take a look at that when we actually take our flight. Going over to the next phase, ah, this is where it gets complicated. This is going to be where you're going to go ahead and select what we're going to be doing for our approach. You can dial in the QNH, the air temperature, which we actually know. We must have put in right now. Boop. Success. You can dial in the wind. You can dial in the transition altitude, which is here. It's either 20,000 feet pretty much in the rest of the world or 18,000 feet in the U.S. You can set your approach speed. Again, your approach speed is completely a function of what landing configuration you are. Normally, what you'd be able to do is you'd be able to click this button right here and say, I want to use full flaps for landing. Otherwise, it's going to assume you're using flaps three. Uh, I see if you see the idea. Up here, we can set our MDA, which is our decision altitude. That's going to be radar altitude. Or we can set our decision height, which is going to be a physical barometric pressure. So for example, example, I know on this particular approach, it's got an MDA of 200. I can dial that in before I've even started the engines on the airplane, which I think is absolutely amazing. And of course, you have a magnetic wind, QNH. We don't know until we get there. So I'm going to go all the way back to take off. Everything in this computer is set. Uh, generally, when I'm just kind of chilling on here, I usually press the progress page and take a look here. Okay, last thing we need to set up with the FMS here is we need to go ahead and dial in all the critical information into the MCP. Now we've got a perfectly programmed FMS. Let's scoot scoot over here. Uh, generally, we're going to allow the computer to handle everything by putting this into the up arrow mode. You can see I've got the little vertical arrows. Obviously, if you push that, it's going to go ahead and do one of those things. So you want to kind of be mindful of that. You're going to have to push this one back in to abort this mode. I've done that a thousand times. Don't stress. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and dial in our first altitude. Uh, but nice thing about this, by the way, is you can switch it between thousands and hundreds if you want to make yourself insane. Generally, leave it at a thousand. I'm going to go ahead and give this thing a little wheel until we get up to our first altitude, which ironically is our cruise altitude. Now, if you're in a place that's a little bit stricter, let's say that the maximum altitude is 4,000 feet, it will go ahead and do that. Now, one thing I want to warn you about here, by the way, is a lot of different places have limits as far as altitudes that you can utilize. If I actually go to uh, my flight plan here, you're going to notice that this right here at uh, Mike Alpha Uniform says we have to be at or above 7,000 feet. You'll also notice, if I go up a little bit, that all these particular positions have specific feet. In this case, Aldox says 11,500 feet at or above. This one, Corley, says I have to be at 11,500. Uh, Romeo 49er has to be at 5,000 at or above. You can actually see how the altitude shifts. The computer is smart enough to know if it's managed not to cross one of these restrictions. However, you have to tell the computer what its upper limit or lower limit is at all times. Otherwise, it will basically sit there until you tell it to do otherwise. Uh, we'll see that when we actually do our flight a little later on. 
All right, so this flight management system is all set. You can see I've got all my computer programs all set. All this stuff is looking pretty good. You can see everything is managed with the little dots. Um, engines are ready to rock. Uh, next time, we'll look at startup, taxi, and takeoff. Enjoy.